what it talents, what it talents, what it do. And I'm excited to be continuing this series we're ministering on called Healing How. And last week in our series on Healing How, we discovered we already got it. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Hey, we established that it is the will of God that we be healed. You don't have to wonder if it's God's will for you to be healed. We went to Acts 10.30 and showed you how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power to do what? To go around and do good to us, healing all those that were oppressed by the devil. So that's what he was doing while he was walking the earth. And his ministry is still going on through the believers who will allow him to heal through them as we go out and remove the burdens and destroy the yokes of sickness and disease or any other oppression and work of the devil as we destroy the devil devil's work by allowing the Lord to work through us. But what I love about it is God was so excited and it's such his will that we be healed that he took the same Holy Ghost and power that he anointed Jesus with to go around and do good and to heal those that were oppressed of the devil. And when we got born again, that same Holy Ghost and power was shed abroad into our hearts. In other words, when we got born again, we got a recreated spirit man in the Holy Ghost and power that a powerful anointing of healing was infused on the inside of us and that's why we know we already got it if you wasn't here last week you need to go on YouTube and get the first message in this series we discovered last week that we are a three-part being we are a spirit that is who you are you're made in the image of God and God says I am spirit so don't be tripping anymore about how you're made in the image of God you don't need to wonder does he got a nose like you eyes like you is his hair color to say no God is spirit <laughs> glory to God and we are spirit we have a soul which is our mind will and emotion and the soul and the spirit live inside this body which I call an earth suit it transports the spirit and the soul around on this earth glory to God amen and guess what your spirit man sees everything that's going on because these two eyeballs are their windows and he's looking out praise God through the window windows of your eyes. And guess what? When you die, there comes a separation of the spirit and the soul and they go on to be with whoever they made Lord while they were on earth. If you took advantage and received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, got your reservation in while your earth suit was pumping blood and breathing oxygen, you're, you're going heaven bound. But if by default you didn't make that reservation, and you don't do it before you leave, you're hell bound. But we're going to fix that at the end of the service. Amen. Ain't nobody here going to be going to hell or at least not have the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So you know what? If we already got it, then we need to stop trying and start receiving what we already got. Amen. So stop trying to get healed. You are not the sick praying and begging God to heal you. You are the healed denying the devil from running off with your healing. You see, you are one third wall to wall Holy Ghost and healing power. You're one third got the power and the glory of God, the raising the dead anointing on the inside of you and your spirit man. Now your soul, nothing happened to that. So we got a process which we call renewing our minds in the word of God. Learning what God says in his word so we can change our thinking to align with God's so that we can see the explosive power of what happened in that one third of us make its way through our mind, will, and emotions and show up in our physical world. And the body, nothing happened to that when you receive salvation. And that's where the attack of the enemy is. He attacks the body with sickness and disease. 
sense and he can attack the mind with mental oppression, but you will never lose that one third of you that's wall to wall Holy Ghost packing the healing power of God. So therefore, what we have to do is learn how to receive what God has already provided on the inside of us to get our thinking to line up with God's word so that we can start pumping up this healing power from within the spirit man to travel through our mind, will, and emotion and invade our physical body to manifest in our physical body the healing that we're in need of. Amen? But you understand, you already got it. Amen? And you don't have to struggle to get what you already got. I'd rather know it's a lot easier to get something you already got than to be begging and trying to go get something you don't have. So you got to get your mind thinking, look, one third of me is wall to wall Holy Ghost. One third of me is packing wall to wall healing power of God. One third of me has God on the inside, the raising the dead power, the anointing, the wisdom, the power, the blessing. I mean, Ephesians 1, 3 said, I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Well, if I've been blessed, you've been blessed. When did it happen when you received Jesus? In your heart as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Glory to God. So this morning I want to talk to you about how do I stop trying to get healed and just go on and learn how to receive what I've already got when I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And so in order for that to happen, there's got to be some working on your mind, will, and emotions. Because I said you're a three-part being, and the mind, will, and emotions, which is in, encased inside of the soul, stands between the spirit man and your physical body. And it's actually a bridge. So whatever's in the spirit man has to have permission, isn't that something? Has to have your permission to allow it to pass into your physical body or your physical world. You know, that's why the scriptures tell you in Proverbs 4, 23, in the easy reading version, be careful what you think, for your thoughts control your life. If you think you're sick and you think you're going to die, most likely you'll stay sick and you will die. Oh, they've proven it out in medical science. You know, when they give placebos to like cancer patients and then they give the real dr drug and the ones that think they have the real drug, but they really got placebos, actually got um, documented medical science shows that they made improvement and extended their life longevity of years. All about the power of your thinking. Your thinking's powerful, amen? And then in 3 John 1 and 2, we find out that the only way you can walk in health is you got to have a prosperous soul. You have to have a mind that's not conformed to the world's way, according to Romans 12 and 2. You know, the world's way of thinking, what the doctor says, with this. And I'm not saying deny what the doctor says. It's just a greater truth that says you're already healed. And we want to learn how to take God's word, which supersedes a fact. And cause that truth of God's word to show up in our bodies, to show up in our physical world. So 3 John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I pray that ye may prosper in every way, that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. Your ability to stay healthy and to keep this body from being attacked by the enemy is dependent upon you renewing your mind with the word of God. You believing and trusting that I'm already healed. I'm not trying to get healed. One third of me is wall to wall Holy Ghost. I'm assured that the helpers on the inside of me, God himself stepped on the inside of me to help me move the power of this healing that's in me because I got that Holy Ghost ghost and power and if it was on Jesus to do good and Jesus stepped in me when the spirit of Jesus Christ was shed abroad into my spirit he's still in me wanting to make sure that my flesh receives his goodness that he already provided me amen so we have to do something with our thought life amen and so that's what I want to help you with I want to help you to get to the place of trusting and believing God's word 
whether you know it or not, any, not, I'm sorry, whether you know it or not, every time the word of God is revealed, which is the will of God, there's a faith fight to receive that word. The enemy comes immediately to challenge that word. Amen. And where's the battlefield? In your mind. He's wrecking havoc with your believing. Because if you don't believe right, if you don't think right, then you don't receive the promises of God into your physical world, even though you already possess them in one-third of your body. Amen? One-third of who you are in your spirit, man. So this morning, as we take uh, a journey to stop trying to get your healing, but start receiving your healing. Amen? The first thing you're going to have to learn how to do is labor to enter into God's rest. Oh, yes. It's going to take some work, labor to enter into God's rest. In Hebrews 4, 6, in the Passion Translation, it says, Those who first heard the good news of deliverance failed to enter into that realm of faith rest because of their un." believing heart. He's referring to the people, the Israelites, that were released from Egypt, and they were promised to walk into a promised land and have a new beginning, but they did not. They died in the wilderness. Why did they die in the wilderness? Because they never reached a place to believe God's promise to them. They remained with an unbelieving heart. But yet the scripture goes on and says, yet the fact remains that we still have the opportunity to enter into the faith rest life and experience the fulfillment of the promise. Do you realize if we enter into believing God's word in our heart, that we will see the manifestation of what already belongs to us in our physical part of our bodies? Amen. So this is important. You're not laboring to be healed. You, are, you already got that. So beware. You are not laboring to be healed. You are laboring to move from worry and stress and unbelief into God's rest of believing you already have healing. And if I continue to stay on this word... It's just a matter of time before I see what God has already deposited in my spirit, man, show up in my physical body. Because I already got it. Amen? So, this is what helps me with any battle. Because it's not just a word on healing. It's any word that you're standing on, whether it's for your marriage, whether it's for your children, whether it's for your finances, um, your mental health, stability, peace, joy. You know, whatever word you take from the scriptures to stand on, you're going to have to learn to labor into God's rest, to believe and trust God's word and get rid of the worry. So this scripture helps me universally with every issue. Amen? Listen to this. Matthew 6, and I'm reading in the message, 30, starting at verse 30, and then I'm going to read 30 through 31, then 34. It says, if God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen, don't you think he'll tend to you? take pride in you and do his best for you? What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. In other words, stop trying and start receiving. Verse 34, how do you do that? Give your attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. That's something to say lie on, meditate on, 
reread it. Say, God, pray over it in the spirit. Say, God, speak to me. That's so good. Focus on what God is doing now. The healer is in the house. God has already manifested healing on the inside of every born-again believer. And it's his endeavor that you see it come into your physical body this morning. Whether it be mental healing, physical healing, maybe you need financial healing, whichever, maybe you need healing in your marriage. This is how you lay a hold of this, by laboring to enter into God's rest. So this is what you do when you get a negative report, like from the doctor. So the first thing you want to go is to the word of God. When, when, when something's going wrong in your marriage, when something's going against you with anxiety and fear, when something is messing up in, 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 in with your relationship with your children or in your finances, the first thing you do is go to the Word of God. The Word of God is God's will. And if I recall in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, when we pray according to God's will, God is present and hearing, and we already have the fulfillment of the promise of the will of God we're praying already answered and given to us. That's just a paraphrase of 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Amen? So, you know, it would be easier to live in this place instead of waiting for a bad news. You know, because it is hard to build a house in the middle of a storm, a hurricane, you know, a tsunami. So, you know, if you stay in life union with God from day to day, making meditating on at least one healing scripture, your daily practice, if you would practice these things of releasing the power of the healing that's already in your spirit into your physical man when you got a cold, when you have a sinus infection, when you have an a ache, a pain in your body, even if you decide I want to take the Tylenol, even if you decide to take the flu medicine, the cold medicine, you still need to be practicing moving this healing power into your physical body. So what would be two weeks down with the flu might be three days for you all week. Shorten the time. But see, when you don't practice these things, sometimes we're behind the curveball. Sometimes the body is overtaken by too much sickness and disease. Maybe it's the fourth stage of cancer. But you know, that's still not impossible to put these principles to work and see it work. I heard Joe Osteen's mother, she had stage four cancer, liver cancer, back 30 years ago. And they sent her home to die. And she's gonna, she did the principles I'm gonna teach you this morning. And 30 years later, she's still here. Heal 100%. But see, but, but, but this, saints, this is why we need y'all walking in what belongs to you and recognizing you already got the healer in you so that now we can go lay hands on somebody that might not have the faith or be able to do what Joe Osteen's mother did all those years ago or what I'm about to say. And we believe for the miraculous presence of God to bring a supernatural healing by the laying on of hands, you know. But the first thing, oh, God, where'd that time go? Good gracious. <laughs> so the first thing you do if you get a negative report from the doctor is get the word of God that pertains to your healing. So we already established Acts 1038. Last week we established 1 Peter 2:24, who his own self bore our sins, talking about Jesus in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Then we went to Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely Jesus has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But Jesus was wounded for our transgression. Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Jesus. And with the stripes, his stripes, we are healed. So we established in the Old Testament, this is um, Isaiah prophesying what was going to happen when Jesus went to the cross and was whipped 
and rose again from the grave without victory, we are healed. He's looking forward. But in 1 Peter, we're looking back at the cross and see we're already healed because it says we're healed. You already got it. Amen. You're not trying to beg God to give you healing. He's already given it to you. Amen. And you got to realize the word is your final authority, not the doctor. Yes, it may be a fact that you have cancer. It may be a fact that you have high, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes. That might be a fact. But in my Bibles in Corinthians, it says those things that are seen are temporary. And they are subject to change according to the word of God that you believe. I'm talking about trying to bring you to a place of entering into God's rest, believing his word. Amen? Amen. So get as many scriptures on healing as you can. If it's something else you're dealing with, if it's lack, get many scriptures as you can on lack. But we're talking about healing here. And why do you do that? Because the word of God is our medicine. Do you know Proverbs 20:22 20, says, my son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my saying. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart for they are life, life, life to those who find them and healing and healing and health to all their flesh. The word of God is medicine. Keeping them in their eyes is what I'm going to teach you about meditation because that's how you learn how to enter into God's rest. It allows you to observe and see that word working in your life. And then Psalms 107.20 says, He sent his word and healed them and rescued them from their destruction. The word of God is medicine. Just as you go to the medicine cabinet to get the appropriate medicine for the illness, you go get Tylenol for the headache, for the stomach ache. You might get Alka-Seltzer for the heartburn. You go get Tum. Well, I want you to know the B-I-B-L-E is your medicine cabinet. Then you need to go in there and pull out the appropriate word for the situation that you need to possess your victory. If you're, if you're in a battle concerning sickness and disease, you don't need word on how to prosper at that time. You don't, be in, you don't have a, a, a stomach ache and go take Tylenol for it. Okay? So get the appropriate word for the situation. So now that you got the word, this is what you're going to do with it. You're going to start taking it like medicine. Three times a day in your eye gate. Three times a day listening to messages on healing. Three times a day saying it out your mouth, the word of God, and repeating it and making it personal and confessing it over your life back to yourself. Three times a day. And if conditions get worse, increase the dosage. Amen? So Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 in the Easy Readings Virgin says this, My son... Pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Don't let them out of your sight. Never stop thinking about them. So you have a better understanding. What does it mean? Don't let the word out of your sight. Don't let it slip your thoughts. Remember, be careful what you think for your thoughts control your life. What would happen to a heart that has think that the heart that's full of God's words in their thought? We would begin to see your life controlled by that word in, in your outward life. It says, these words are the secret of life and health to all who discover them. So in order to keep the word of God in your heart and your thoughts, you need to learn to meditate in the word of God, reference healing. That's the battle. We're learning how to enter into God's rest. We're laboring to get into God's rest. We know we already got healing. We got to do something with this stinking thinking, this unbelieving heart that's making me full of fear, worry, and stress. So how do I conquer that? Start first taking those scriptures on healing and start meditating on the, that word. In Joshua 1 8, it says, the book, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. In other words, the word of God should never be absent from your mouth. You should always be speaking God's word. And if it's dealing with healing, we want to get healing confession, saying what God's word says about your life coming out of your mouth. 
And then it says, but not only that, I need you to meditate on the word day and night. What happens if you meditate on the word day and night? It will cause you to observe. You'll start seeing your victory. You'll start seeing the manifestation of that word in a life, in your life. And then it'll cause you to do according to all that is written in. You say, well, what do I need to do? Well, maybe you're dealing with a sickness. Maybe you're dealing with lung cancer and you're having problems putting down the cigarettes that are empowering this lung cancer to have a, Satan to have an open doorway in your, in your body. Well, then you will begin to see your victory and you'll begin to hear God say, put the cigarettes down. And the more you see your victory, you'll start believing God for supernatural breaking of that desire of putting those cigarettes down. See, there's a scripture in Philippians 2.13 that you, it is God in you that creates and energizes in you a desire to will and do for his good pleasure, satisfaction, and delight. That I, if I'm having problems willing and doing, I'm calling on the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of me to create a new desire for him. So the more you spend in the word, whatever you spend the most time with is where a desire comes. You want to break a habit? Then get a new focus. Get it off the problem and focus it on where you want to go. You can never be afraid of not becoming something and think you're not going to become that thing. You can't, have a, you can't come from a parents that were um, children beaters and, and be afraid that I'm going to grow up and beat my child and I'm going to be like my parents and I don't want to be like my parents were and I don't want to be beating on my child. Well, you're going to end up beating on your child because you haven't put nothing new to focus you in what type of parent you want to be. Your deliverance comes by finding what you want to become and focus on that. You want to be the heel and no longer sick? You got to get your mind off worrying about what you think this disease is going to do to you. Your cancer, your arthritis, your this. Oh, they said this. It runs in the family. Don't worry. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Be careful what you think because we're going to see that control in your life. No, you get in this word on healing and you say, I meditate. Jesus, I thank you. That the Holy Ghost and power lives on the inside of me, working good. He bringing forth healing into my physical body. Jesus, I thank you that by your stripes I am healed and I were healed. So I declare that I am healed by Jesus' stripes because I already got it. If I am and then I were, then I already possess it. Amen. And as you meditate. And as you meditate, and as you meditate, you'll start seeing good success. Amen. Amen. So how do you meditate? Think on the word. Ponder the word. Roll it over and over in your mind like you would worrying about a problem. Y'all know how to worry. Well, instead of worry, put the word of God like that. Don't worry. The helper's in you to help you. See, the more you stay with it, you allow the helper, the Holy Ghost, to rise up and empower you, to strengthen you, to, put, to keep that thought in your mind. You know, it's just like playing a song over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And then when you got it all, man, you just hopping and skipping and that song just rolling up in your thought life. You, you know, you, you get up in the morning and that song is playing in your head. You're at work doing work, but that song keeps rising up and you don't have it on. You just listen to it so much that it rises up where you can get to a place where you stay with the word of God, where you're confessing it, putting in your eye gate, putting in your ear gate, listening to preach messages on healing, that it just rises up it overtakes and swallows up worry swallows up fear it is no other room but for the word of God to play over and over in your head so treat it like a love letter keep God's word like a love letter you know back in the time if, if you couldn't communicate with any anybody with a person that you really love in person and every time they would write you a letter and if they were sharing their bearing their heart and sharing their love for you you would take that thing and reread it you would ponder it and treasure it especially if they're gone on to be with the Lord and that's all you have left you would value it treasure it. this word is the counsel of God's heart it's his love towards you it's his promises. His, so you take the word on healing and you absorb it like that. I'm trying to help you learn how to meditate. Amen. 
And like I said, you keep it in your mind, your thoughts on the word all day. You speak, you confess the word out of your mouth. Because I'm going to tell you what, when, when, when that word is resonating you, you can't help but say that word. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will begin to declare. That song that's rising up in you, you know you be humming in it and, and, and singing it. And people be like, what in the world? It works that way. Amen. So meditation also involves listening constantly to faith teaching on healing, healing confessions, healing prayers. Say, I don't have any. Well, go to our website. We're starting this series. Amen. Go back and get the first teaching. You need to be established. In why is it the will of God that we be healed? And you need to understand that you already got it. Beautiful place to start. Then add this one to it. Apostle Cynthia just did a series a few months back, six-part series on the secrets to healing. Get on your phone and use the internet and Google scriptures about healing. If you're not, if you don't know healing scriptures, what does the Bible say about healing? What are the scriptures? You are in an age where ignorance should not be. Knowledge is everywhere crying out. Glory to God. Amen. Okay. So these actions, when you start doing this, can you give me just 10 more minutes? These actions, when you start doing this, pumps up that healing power, causes your helper, your strengthener, the counselor, the God on inside of you to arise. And it begins to cause it to pump up like you're pumping up um, water out of a well and you're trying to, and it begins to come through your mind, will, and emotions because now Fear and worry and unbelief are moving out, and you are in agreement. Yes, I'm the heel. Yes, I trust God. I believe his word, and it can walk through the soul, the mind, will, and emotion, and begin to flood your body. Now, this is a process. This isn't an overnight thing. Miracles are overnight. Miracles are suddenly. I can't tell you if it'll take a day a two, a week, three weeks, a month, a year. All I know is don't quit. It's working. You remember Jesus spoke to, Jesus himself spoke to the fig tree. Because Why? He was mad because it was a fake. I don't know if you know it, when um, fig trees bloom their leaves, they're supposed to have figs on them. He was hungry. He went to get some figs, and it didn't have any. And he says, nobody else will eat of you ever again. So he cursed it for being a phony, a hypocrite. Now that can preach. That's a word, but we ain't talking about that. And the disciples were there looking at it, and it did not die instantly. And then you know Jesus believes and trusts the word of God. He ain't no having no problem. But if you read the, the four gospels, you see how much time Jesus spent with God, showing you how to labor to enter into his rest. But that tree was alive. But 24 hours later, they came back. And, they, and then one of their disciples said, Master, Master, look, look, the tree is all shriveled up and died. He said, it was dead when I spoke to it at the roots. All those leaves that were still hanging around, they were just symptoms of the old life. But the, my word had severed it at the roots. And it was just a matter of time before it, and when it severed at the roots, it mean it had no more life to produce nothing else. And it's just a matter of time before you see death. It's the same thing when you stand on the word and you're confessing and you're filling it up in your spirit. Once you believe and you can say what it is, you have the ability to command the works of God's hand. Do you know Isaiah 45, 11 said we can command the works of God's hand? And in, in Psalms 8 and 6, God has given man dominion over the works of his hand. And he tells you how to have that dominion by opening up your mouth and command the works of God's hand. He didn't say command him his work. Are we not the works of God's hand? Is this physical body not the works of God's hand? Can you not speak to your body and tell it what it's going to be? Tell it it is healed by Jesus stripe. Tell it that it is walking in the manifestation of the miraculous of the hill. Can you not speak to this body and command sickness and disease to get off of it? Can you not speak to this body and curse the very root of sickness and disease and destroy it and uproot it and cast it back to the pit of hell? Can you not? Will you take
take it up with God because that's what my Bible tells me between Psalms 8 and 6 and Isaiah 45, 11. And I read in Genesis where God created me. So, and he created you, so you are the works of God's hand. So when you stay with this meditation, it will cause you to see your victory. Then you begin to hear God speak to you about what to do. Whether there's any food you need to make changes in, whether you need to make, drink more water, whether you need to exercise, whether you need to go see a certain kind of doctor. God still in the business of taking the natural and putting this super on it, especially if you're so far gone in this sickness that you need the intervention of natural medicine. So nowhere in this teaching are we saying don't go to the doctor. We're not telling you to throw away your medicine and we're not telling you to take medicine. And we're just saying, or have the surgery, we're just saying learn how to receive what you already got whether you're go while you're going through those natural processes. So maybe when surgery comes, it won't be there, the mass they said they saw. Maybe, maybe the high blood pressure medicine with following God and following his new instructions and the power of the word will bring your blood pressure back to normal. Amen? But when you meditate, faith will come. Oh, my God, faith is the magnet to what you already got in your spirit. And then, like I said, out of the abundance of your heart, you will start declaring the word of God. And that will result in you stop trying and start receiving the healing power of God in your spirit into your body. Now, I'm just going to mention the next two processes because they will add to your laboring to enter into God's rest. Worship and praise and give God thanksgiving for what you already got. Give him thanksgiving for already being healed. Get yourself some good praise and worship music that puts you in a place of praising God. Begin to declare his word out of his mouth with thanksgiving. Thank him that you already got healing. Thank you that he's already put his Holy Ghost and power in you and Jesus is in you doing good and healing is manifesting in your body. Go to Psalms 145 and read from Psalms 145 out loud all the way to Psalms 150 and declare the goodness of God. I'm telling you in Psalms 810, you will silence the enemy. I'm sorry, Psalms 82 of the Passion Translation says, when we get praise and worship in our mouth, we silence the enemy. That little voice that's saying, you're going to die. It's not going to work for you. That's Pastor Cynthia, but you know you ain't got enough faith. This sickness is as unto death. You know what so-and-so and so-and-so -so went through. You know this runs in the family. No, it will silence, shut them up. Amen. According to Psalms 8 and 2. In Psalms 149, 6 through, 6 through 9, in the Passion Translation or either Amplified Classic, it lets you know that the Word of God is a two edged sword in our mouth. And when we put high praises in our mouth, it is a weapon of warfare for us. Do the enemy in. Read that for yourself. Psalms 149, verses 6 through 9 in the Passion Translation. So when you establish yourself in a praise party, like, well, like I said, one of the things I've been doing is playing this song over and over and over. And because it looked like I was struggling to get in the word. It looks like I couldn't stop the doubt and unbelief or the worry and the stress. The more I would try to meditate, it looked like I couldn't shut that devil up. So I began to play this song that was upbeat and it even went old school. I, it was Faithful Then and Faithful Now by Elevation. But I listened to the extended version where they started singing songs where I came out of my Pentecostal background and it was like 10 minutes long and I play it over and over and over till it began to rise up until I no longer had thoughts of fear no longer had thoughts of worry no longer had thoughts of stress all what was coming up was that song I was praising Jesus for my answer I was doing a jig and a dance to that song and I'm telling you I was skipping and dancing whether it was on or off because that's all I could hear in my inner thoughts no more fear, no more stress, no more anxiousness, nothing but praise in my heart. So it's important that you do this. It'll help you enter into God's rest. And the last thing you want to do is you need to go over how much God loves you. 
I mean, John 3, 16, he so loved you. You know that scripture, that he gave his only begotten son that we would not perish but have eternal life. Then you couple that with Romans 8, 32 that says God demonstrated his love towards us so much by giving his only son. Don't you think that he will give you all other things? Amen. Go over scriptures like Rome. I love the one in Romans 8.35. Amen. One of my favorite ones in the message. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way. Trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in the scriptures can separate us from the love of God. When you do all of those processes from laboring to enter into God's rest through meditation on the word and you add to that praise and worship and thanksgiving for what he's already gotten, the healing for you, and you remind yourself daily of the love of God because you're in this union with him, I'm going to tell you, you'll slip from unbelief to a surety that it's just a matter of time before I see the physical manifestation, because I know I already got it. So I'm not wondering when is already done. Come on and stand to your feet. Amen. Glory to God. Let's give God praise for helping us to stop trying and learning how to receive this morning. Glory to God. So God, I thank you. I thank you for this word that you have brought to us. And I pray that those that have sat under this word this morning or will see it later stream, God, that, God, that you will speak loudly behind the voice of the word I preach to their hearts about their specific situation, that, God, you will show and direct them as you will have them to go, and, God, they will walk into the promise of God of manifested healing, or any other area of their life that they need healing in that's not pertaining to their physical body, but maybe another area of their life in their mind, in their families, in their finances. But we thank you. Well, I just don't want to end service without offering Jesus. I mean, he's the healer. And he comes not only to heal, he comes to save. And that's the main reason to deliver us from the stronghold and the snare of the devil to put us into his family. And healing starts with salvation. So if you're here in this house and you haven't received Jesus or you're online, look, this is your opportunity. So every head bow, every eye closed in the house. If you're out there online, just close your eyes and bow your head as a place of reverence. Because you want to be able to honor God and know what he's speaking to you. So if you have not ever confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior and asked him to come live in your heart, raise your hand high. This is your opportunity. I can't even understand why you would not want all of what he died and sacrificed to give us. If you're online and you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, put a hand up in the chat. But today is your day of salvation. This is your yes day. This is your deliverance day. Amen. So on the chat or here in the house, if you want to receive Jesus, this is all I need you to do is to repeat this prayer after me and believe it in your heart. And the prayer you are repeating is based on Romans chapter 10. Whoever would believe in his heart, the Lord Jesus died for them and confess with their mouth shall confess unto salvation. So repeat this prayer, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again from the dead. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for me. I receive you in my life. I am asking for you to come live in my heart. I receive you now as my healer and my Lord and my Savior. Glory to God. If you just said that prayer and you meant it in your heart, the greatest miracle has just taken place today. You have been snatched from the grips, dominion, and power of the devil and translated into God's family. Welcome to the family of God. Hey, if you made that prayer confession here in this house, look, 
at the end of service, I'm going to come back up here. I want to pray with you. I want to make sure we connect with you. If you gave your life to the Lord, if you're online, connect with our Victory Connect number. You are in a new family. You have no idea how to navigate in this new family, and we want to come up alongside you and help you. So text hashtag VCMI to 22300. A link will pop up on your mobile device. Hit the link, fill out the paperwork, the little prompting, and hit submit.